Hey guys, how are we doing? Back with another video from Too Spooky. <clears throat> it's been far too long. I apologise, I've got a bit of a sore throat and a cold coming on, so I'm a bit like, Ugh. but I must continue. For the fans! Um, we are checking out um, explaining Killua's old dikes and then abilities. Killua is so freaking cool, and the whole lightning thing he had near the end, and he's fighting one of the uh, three guards, uh, was cool. But he went dumb. <laughs> I loved it. He's like speeding the guy can't keep up. And as soon as he's like, he's like bounce. Anyway, <laughs> let's uh, see what Too Spooky has to say about it. How's it going, everybody? How's it going, buddy? Too Spooky here. Yeah. And welcome back to Nen Explain, All right. where we go in depth with the various Nen abilities and how they work. In this installment, we're tackling Kalua's various Nen abilities. It's so cool. As one of the four main characters, it's safe to say we know quite a bit about his abilities. He has control since we've seen Kalua develop these abilities throughout the course of the series. Mm -hmm. That being said, though, Kalua in particular also has many other abilities outside of just his Nen. Because he's part of the Zoltak family. Most of result of growing up in his family of yep. assassins being subjected to various harmful forms of torture to strengthen his body in multiple different ways. Because this being told to in run away. particular <laughs> is only meant to focus on Kalua's Nen, I won't be touching on all his extra physical abilities unless they directly relate to his Nen in some way. Right. So just keep that in mind hmm, going forward. Okay. This video will also be referencing a lot of the different Nen concepts, mm -hmm. such as the basic principles. So if you aren't familiar with that terminology or you just need a refresher, be sure to follow the card in the top right-hand corner of the screen, which covers the concept of Nen as a whole. Before we actually get to his Nen abilities, or Hatsu, let's first take a look at Kalua's experience with Nen as a whole. Cool. The first thing to note would be that Kalua is a transmuter. As a little refresher on what exactly that is, transmutation is the Nen type that allows the user to transform Aura itself into essentially another existing uh -huh. substance. Like Bungie However, God. it should be noted that changing the Aura like this is really only copying the properties of an existing substance, rather than actually becoming that substance yeah, like, like a conjured up, object. Yeah. Transmutating aura is also not limited to the properties of only physical substances, and can also mimic the properties of various energy sources. So far, all of Kilua's Hatsu techniques line up with his Nen type being transmutation abilities, uh -huh. but we also know that Kilua is at least somewhat capable of using enhancement and conjuration Nen types, as Biscuit's training required him to do so. Uh -huh. When first learning how to use the basics of Nen from Wing, Wing back. mentioned that both Gon and Kilua were naturals, and their Therefore, very talented. A talent so amazing, in fact, that the two of them are likely each one in ten million. Wow. Since we watched Boom. Kalua develop That's quite a number. skills with Nen <coughs> firsthand, we also know that he's already mastered the four basic principles, along with the advanced techniques, excluding N and N, which he has N. trouble using. Mm. Some of the notable things to note about his skills with these techniques are as follows. He was able to use 10 successfully on his first try, after only having his aura nodes open for mere minutes, and can now additionally keep 10 active at all times. Impressive. He was able to use Ren in a single night. With Ren, Killua is able to extend his aura up to 57 centimeters, cool. which he uses to sense enemy attacks uh -huh. from afar since he is unable to use N effectively. And he can also use his Ren for up to three hours while projecting it constantly. He was additionally able to learn Gyo in that same single night. He was able to learn Zetsu on his own after watching Gon, and has since become very efficient with it. His assassin upbringing no doubt contributed to that. Definitely, he was yeah. <laughs> able to learn Ko rather easily on Greed Island, and is now able to use it instantaneously. The final thing to mention about his overview with Nen usage would be that Kalua is an expert when it comes to distributing Nen throughout his body. This was most notably mentioned by Razor, who noted that Dodge Kalua's ability fight, yeah. to distribute his Nen correctly to both his lower and upper half was done with a margin of less than 1% error. Class. And while Absolute Nen class. control is just a basic technique in in general, being able to use it successfully like that at an expert level is no easy feat, mm -hmm. especially since Kalua hadn't been using Nen for very long. <clears throat> After witnessing this same feat, Biscuit even mentioned that she wouldn't have expected this level of skill from Kalua already, considering her skill wasn't at that level My until God, she was 20 he's surpassing years old me. herself. All of these examples therefore show us that his efficiency and overall control of Nen is already magnificent. And while both Kalua and Gon may be considered 1 in 10 million with their usage of Nen, 
it's clear that Kalua is the one that has better control of his Nan yep, as a whole. I would say that. But yeah. with that overview out of the way, let's move on to Kalua's various Hatsu yeah, techniques. Yeah, what can he do? Like we mentioned before, all of Kalua's Hatsu revolves around his natural Nen type, transmutation. Mm -hmm. Essentially, all of these abilities surround the concept of Kalua transmuting his aura to mimic the properties of electricity. Oh, my now, God, something it's to so note cool. about this would be that in general, most Nen abilities involving transmutation usually mimic the properties of a physical object or substance. An example being Hisoka's Nen ability, Bungie, Bungie Gum, gum. Yeah. which has the properties of both rubber and gum. I could go into that a little more, but bungee gum is extremely hard to explain. Um, so imagining really Nuxtaku saying that one. Uh, did you know? Like electricity. <laughs> but obviously, it is possible because Kalua can do it. The only thing is, for a transmuter to change the properties of their Nen to copy something else, they need to be very familiar with the properties of that object or substance to accurately copy it. Which is very similar to how conjurers need to overly familiarize themselves with the objects that they want to conjure ahead of time. Mm. At least in most cases. So for Kalua to be able to transmute electricity, he would have needed to be exposed to an immense amount of electricity exposed. periodically exposed. for exposed. years. Which is why when he first demonstrated it to experienced Nen users, they were baffled that he was actually able to do it. Mm. The reason Kalua was uh. able to transmute his aura to mimic electricity in such a short amount of time is simply because of how he was raised within the Zoldique family. To train Kalua to be a top tier assassin, his family essentially put him it through hell, him, yeah. which includes various types of torture, mm. forced poison immunity by exposing him to god knows how many toxins, and also being exposed to various levels of electricity since he was only a baby to force his body to develop a resistance. Crazy. That being said, Absolutely although he does crazy. have a massive resistance to electric shocks, he still feels the pain of it. He can just no longer be incapacitated or even slowed down by it. Mm. So because Kalua had so much experience with electricity for the majority of his lifetime, he is already preconditioned to understand its properties, and was therefore able to accurately transmute his aura to match it. Really In general, so cool. this allows him to deliver electric shocks to his opponents at any time, and just create electric aura in general. But something to note would be that by itself, the electricity he's able to create on his own isn't very much. In fact, to even use it properly, Kalua needs to essentially charge his body with some other source of electricity, such as tasing himself yeah, or why it runs an electrical out, yeah. plug. Because Kalua needs to charge himself to use this ability, he only has a set amount of electrical attacks that mm -hmm. he is able to use, until he eventually runs out and needs to charge himself up again. The biggest downfall of this being that he doesn't exactly have a good idea of how much electricity he's using when he does use it, or how much he can even store in the first place. And for that reason, he can also unexpectedly That's why like, run okay, out run away, fight. Go on. Kalua also mentioned to Kite that his electricity <laughs> isn't quite as strong as he would like it to be yet, and in general, it drains him fairly quickly. But now that you know how his Hatsu works, let's take a look at his named techniques. The first technique that Kalua named was called Lightning Palm, cool. which is cool. basically where he thrusts both of his palms onto his opponent, while releasing Lightning. a powerful jolt of electricity <laughs> upon contact. It's in the his name. opponent at the time was relatively unfazed by this, but the technique was able to slightly burn him and stun him for a moment, likely meaning that either Kalua's electrical reserves were pretty low at that time, or this technique just doesn't pack that much of a punch. Mm. The second so technique is that. called Thunderbolt, which is essentially where Kalua jumps into the air and basically a shoots Pokemon a bolt attack. of lightning down <laughs> upon his opponent. Right, you. <laughs> oh, hey. There we go. <laughs> So far Fair from enough. what we've seen, <laughs> this technique wasn't exactly <clears throat> able to do any physical damage, but it was able to stun one of the Chimera Ant Royal Guards, which is a feat of its own, if yes. you ask me. Jesus, the yeah. third and final technique <sighs> is called Godspeed, Godspeed, which can be broken up into two sub-abilities called Whirlwind and Speed of Lightning. Oh my God, Both so of these cool. abilities involve Kalua spreading his Look at how awesome throughout his entire body, and using it to stimulate his muscles. Uh, With Whirlwind, Kalua is essentially able to use his electric aura as N. Like we mentioned earlier, Kalua isn't able to use N by itself, so to bypass that weakness, this technique essentially gives him the ability of N, but at a very short distance. Basically what I mean by that is Kalua's electric aura with Godspeed goes throughout his entire body, greatly strengthening his muscles, allowing greater strength and speed it was for so cool matter. when he did this, so it's like, oh Kalua my god, to do how fast was instruct his really. electrical men to react the moment something touches or is going to touch his body. The best two examples of this are with the darts and against the Chimera mm. and Royal Guard, Poof. 
In normal circumstances, when something touches our bodies, the nerves that are touched deliver a message to our brain telling us that we've been touched in that spot, which then sends a message to our muscles to react to whatever is touching us. However, sometimes in very intense situations, things happen so quickly that our brain you isn't able to react it. in yeah. time, and we don't realize what happened until it's already too late. So because Godspeed greatly enhances Kalua's speed and strength, to the point where he's faster than his nerves and his brain for that matter, he instructed his aura to instead be the device that reacts whenever it's touched, rather than his nerves. So when something touches the aura surrounding his body, his aura is instructed to automatically react and stop whatever crazy. touched the Absolutely aura, crazy. essentially granting Kalua greatly enhanced reaction time that doesn't even require his brain. Yeah, he doesn't need this to process it himself, that's just mental. This is dart that was aimed at his skull. The second it materialized and touched his aura, the aura was instructed to grab and stop the dart, and due to Whirlwind's greatly enhanced speed, it makes this completely possible. Against Poos, Whirlwind was able to draw an electrical circle around Kalua and Komugi, and if Poof entered the circle from any angle, Kalua's aura would allow his muscles to react instantly and deliver a counter attack. Crazy, it's so the crazy. The reaction commands can also be changed to many different things based on what Kalua is up against, as it can be for physical objects or touches, bloodlust or general bad emotions in aura from another, or like we just demonstrated with Poof, someone entering a predetermined area. Because Whirlwind gives Kalua enhanced strength and speed, he was also able to deliver powerful and quick attacks against Yupi. During that fight, Kalua's aura was basically instructed to counterattack whenever Yupi was going to attack. And during that whole process, Kalua was moving so quickly that it seemed as though he disappeared half the time. Also, during that fight, Yupi even mentioned how helpless he was to fight back. The other ability of Godspeed, and just Speed ran out. <laughs> of Lightning, is essentially the same concept as Whirlwind, except this time around Kalua is in full <clears throat> control of his movements rather than instructing his aura to essentially move for him. This therefore allows him to run extremely fast and also jump incredibly high. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. The speed <clears throat> Kalua is able to run is unfortunately unknown. But we do know that he is slowed down significantly by rough terrains, and can run much faster on a straight pathway. But, that does it for Kalua's various nan abilities and how they work. Oh, wow, cool. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and yeah, hopefully close. you found a better understanding of how exactly Kalua's nan abilities work. If you did, well make sure to thunderclap that like button. And also subscribe with those notifications on so that you don't miss the next installment of oh. Nan Explained. With that, be sure to comment which nan abilities you would like to learn about next. Follow me on Twitter to keep up with the channel. Follow me on for some delicious streams. And also pick up some of the new and hey, pretty cool merch that like we now have available. Uh -huh. All of those links will be in the description. Cool. Without further ado, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time with a new video. Cool. Ugh. I like just seeing clips from Hunter x Hunter and reflecting back on it, it was so cool. I'm trying to convince my girlfriend to watch it, but she's currently enjoying Breaking Bad, which is cool. That's one of my favorite shows. What? He likes a show that isn't anime? Um, these Nan Explained videos are cool, and that was cool how it explained the whole aura thing better. The, the, how it works for Killua and that. And uh, how his Godspeed just takes over. <laughs> he doesn't have to think about what he's doing, he just does it. Absolutely insane. Killua was so freaking OP, and uh, that was a cool little video, I like little jokes as well, I like how I mentioned Pete Raichu doing the Thunderbolt, that he just cut to like Pikachu going, I was like, okay, fine. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching, what do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe if you want to leave comments down below, let me know what I should watch and discuss in future videos, and I'll see you guys. We'll see you guys next time.